G'day guys, well thank you for being here on Friday night and um, you're all in wooden chairs so I'll be quick, I'll be faster than 10 minutes. My slogan is less talk, more action, so it shouldn't be too long for you anyway. Um, I grew up here in Port Macquarie, uh, my family home is on the water and I've seen a few floods here in the town centre of Macquarie, so we certainly don't want to have rising sea levels, we're already flooded frequently enough as it is. Um, but in my life, before I was even born, we were talking about climate change, and I now have wrinkles on my forehead and a receding hairline, and we're still talking about climate change. Um, the only other thing I haven't seen in my lifetime, except for some action on climate change, is a Labor government give us a surplus. Um, but that's another story. So here we are, I'm 23 years old, and we haven't had any action on climate change significantly. How did we get to this situation? Why has it taken so, so long? The key part is lobbyists. Not all lobbyists are bad, some lobbyists are great, but some lobbyists are pushing particular ideas. The Liberal Party right now has got their president and vice president are paid political lobbyists from big lobbyist firms. The same thing in Labor. Now you can assume that if they're being paid to promote a certain idea and they're at executive levels in these parties, they're going to be pushing those ideas to the nth degree to earn their pay packet. In Palmer United, we have a ban on all political parties, and if you win government, we'll enforce that upon all other parties. Um, on to what we'll do about climate change. We already had um, some ladies at the front here give me two big crosses because we've got a, two parts on the back of my flyer saying um, end the carbon tax and refund the carbon tax. Yes, that is our policy to end the carbon tax in its entirety and also to refund the carbon tax every single dollar that's been charged. The reason for that is a pretty good one, so if you can just bear with me. The economists call taxes two kinds of taxes in broad terms. Progressive taxes and regressive taxes. A progressive tax is like income tax, which we all know about. It has different scales, and those who can afford more pay more. Those who can't afford more uh, sometimes don't pay any or pay very little tax. It's a fair tax that helps society. The carbon tax is a regressive tax. It is a flat tax that hits everyone the exact same way. Like the GST is also a flat tax that hits everyone in the exact same way. I don't think this is fair. We've got bank CEOs being charged the same rate as pensioners and minimum wage workers. That is the reason I am passionate about getting rid of the carbon tax or the carbon ETS. You will hear, I'm sure, that the carbon tax or ETS is fully compensated. It is fully compensated at the current prices. However, the current price is 24, 25 bucks a tonne. To have actual effect on the marketplace for carbon, it has to go up to $80 per tonne, according to economists. It is not compensated at $80 per tonne. We need to get rid of it before it gets to $80 per tonne. We have um, people revolting about the price of electricity. We already had governments being thrown out at a state level for the price of electricity. Um, so what we are going to do about climate change? Well, we're going to take six months in our first term of government to actually review what is the best bang for buck, whether it be solar, uh, solar thermal, um, whether it be in transport solutions to try and reduce our carbon emissions. We have committed to the 20% uh, energy target. So what we're looking at is things like the Snowy Hydro project, was it a, the, the greenest initiative that's been done in the Southern Hemisphere. We haven't built one of those for quite a while. We used to build amazing things. We used to be a nation of fighters, now a nation of survivors. We need to go back to building the big projects. And I would say that Clive Palmer is a man who knows how to build big things. And I can't think of anyone more qualified or experienced that I trust more to deliver these projects under budget and on time. Um, for adaptation policies, well, we have a policy for local governments to get a 25% cut of revenue. That would mean 25% cut of GST, uh, income tax, and company tax. That would give local government a much, much greater amount of money to deal with local problems. If it is a national problem, we'll deal with it as it happens. Um, to try and transform the economy, like I said, we're going to try and build additional plants, um, green energy initiatives that will give us the best bang for our buck in reducing the climate change effects and also in increasing our reliance on renewable energy. Um, when it comes to controversial issues, we are the only party with a guarantee on any conscience issue. We'll get a conscience vote. We're the only party with a guaranteed conscience vote. That was pretty important for me when I was signing on to the Palmer United Party to have that sort of a vote. So it means on things like asylum seekers. 
we have a policy which not only maintains our commitments to the UN Convention, will stop the boats, will stop the people smugglers trade, but will also have a humane resettling of genuine refugees and it turns out that doing things the right way saves six and a half billion dollars every year. Offshore jails are pretty darn expensive. Other things like coal seam gas, we've already pledged to halt coal seam gas if we win government. Uh, when it comes to a tax on mining, I am not personally for a tax on mining. Our party has not said that it will be getting rid of that tax, however, it's not much of a tax anyway, it doesn't get much money. I'm not personally for a particular tax on a particular industry when we already have got uh, taxes on the stuff in the ground from the state governments. Um, the same thing goes for gay marriage, abortion, uh, all that sort of stuff. We'll have a conscience vote and I'll be voting on my deeply held beliefs and that of my electorate, as it should be, rather than enforcing my view on my electorate or enforcing the party view on the entire nation. Um, when it comes to these sort of issues, I think that it's pretty vital stuff. And as a young person, I couldn't be more engaged about it. But having a carbon tax or a carbon ETS is punishing the wrong people, making the wrong people pay for it. By using our scaled income taxation system, we are able to build greener technologies in a way that everyone can afford it in the same way we afford everything else that we build. Also, I'll point out for an ETS, one of the biggest proponents for an ETS, Malcolm Turnbull, just a few weeks ago on Late Line, pointed out that despite he does still support an ETS, they have proven highly ineffectual, these are his words, highly ineffectual at actually combating the amount of carbon in an economy. That is what we've gotten from it so far. It is still in its early days, and I look forward to constantly reviewing this. It is not just a one size fits all approach from Palmer United. That is our approach. Thank you very much for your time. And we have 150 candidates, one in every seat of government in Australia. There is now a third choice. We don't have to have parties run by lobbyists. We have got a clear third choice with mainstream ideas that you can vote for, for a real change in government. Thanks very much. Candidate for Palmer United Australia.